What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome new operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now actually, the operating system itself isn't new, it's been out for a while for x86 PCs, but it's finally been ported over to the Raspberry Pi by the official Prime OS developers. And what I have here is a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model in the new Desk Pi Lite case, but I mean you don't need a case for it, you just run it from a micro SD card. This operating system is in beta for the Pi 4, so you will run into some issues, but in this video I wanted to give you a quick look at the operating system itself. We're going to test out a little bit of gaming, cloud gaming, and emulation, and then I'm going to show you how to install it. It's actually really easy to do. But this is known as Prime OS, and it's based on Android 11. And as you can see with the interface here, it's more of a desktop style Android operating system, which makes it really easy to navigate with a keyboard and mouse. Straight out of the box, we do have Google Play installed. You can go ahead and sign in and download your favorite apps from here. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is working, but just like a lot of the other Android operating systems for the Pi, video decoding and encoding isn't working with this operating system, at least yet. Hopefully, in the future, I know we've been saying it for a while, we will get that. But we still have OpenGL and Vulkan working, so when it comes to emulation and native Android gaming, we can get some decent performance out of the Raspberry Pi 4. What I'm going to do now is just plug this in my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. Alright, so here we are. This is Prime OS running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, really easy to navigate, got a mouse and keyboard set up, and basically what we have here is an Android desktop operating system. This is based on Android 11. If we pull down from the top, we've got our regular old, you know, Android settings from here. We can also open them directly from the desktop. And we scroll through, we've got all the regulars, we've even got the Prime Hub here, which gives us some special features for Prime OS itself. One important thing to note with the beta is right now we cannot change the resolution, it's set at 1080p. Hopefully this is fixed soon because, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind running this at 720p. We would get a little better performance out of it given that it's running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we've got our advanced Raspberry Pi settings right here. We can force the rotation, we can change our governor. I usually like to set it to performance. And the max clock right now is 1800 megahertz, but you can always modify the config.txt and take it up to 2 or 2.1, really depends on what your Pi 4 can do. We've also got our audio output. We can do HDMI, which it's set at out of the box, or we can do our headphone jack. And if you need to boot into recovery, we've got the option right here. So that's about it for the Raspberry Pi settings. And I'm really hoping to see a resolution setting in here very soon for Prime OS. So down here in the left hand corner, we've got our little app tray. You can search our apps from here. Uh, basic built-in calculator. Over here, we've still got our notifications. It'll drag down from the top here. So uh, we can do the rotate. We can go directly into our settings from here like a regular old Android phone if you want to. And right out of the box, we do have a browser built in, we've got files, and a gaming center. So once you install a game from Google Play, it'll show up here, you can launch it. We've got our CPU usage, our RAM usage, and everything like that. A really nifty little setup, and key mapping will be coming soon to the Raspberry Pi. I'm not exactly sure if this is working or not. Oh, it might be working right now on the Pi 4. So you could map your controller to a game that doesn't natively support controllers, something like Among Us. Now Genshin Impact really isn't going to run on the Pi 4, but if we ever do get a super performance bump and we're able to run Genshin, this would work with it. That way we could use a controller with that game. Uh, to close everything down, we can go to the very bottom. It'll bring our bar back up, or if we go up to the top. Now uh, again, we'll go to the browser, and let me close this out here. There's no snap right now, so we can't snap it to the left or the right, but we do have our full screen toggle and we can go right back. That way we can have multiple apps open at one time. So if I have the browser opened up and I wanna run the calculator at the same time, side by side, we can do that. We can switch these up, change the window size. And yeah, I mean, it just makes it a lot easier to navigate the Android operating system on a Raspberry Pi. Mouse and keyboard is definitely recommended here. If you've got a touch screen or a USB touch screen, it will also work with this unit, but it's really designed for a mouse and keyboard. So I will go over the installation. It's actually really easy to do, but first up, I wanted to test some native Android games and just a couple emulators to show you what kind of performance you can expect out of this operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4. 
All right, so first up we have Real Racing 3, and by the way, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are working with this build. I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth to the Raspberry Pi, and any game that supports a controller natively, it will work with it. Real Racing 3 is one of those I always like to test because, you know, it's been on the market for a while, very well optimized, and it does work really good on low-end devices like the Raspberry Pi 4. Next up, we've got Minecraft, and with this, I'm basically as low as we can go. We're at 5 chunks, fancy graphics off, and at 1080p, it's not looking too great. At 720, I'm sure it would clean up a little bit, but uh, as you can see, this frame rate is very low, and it's very hit or miss on a Raspberry Pi with Android. There have been some operating systems where this does work much better because I can lower that resolution, but unfortunately, on this beta here, performance isn't that great with Minecraft. But the last native Android thing I wanted to test here was a little bit of cloud gaming. Now, I'm actually plugged in with Ethernet, definitely the best way to go. As you can see, it's really not that bad over Ethernet, but I did run into one issue. When I go full screen with this, it's basically up in the top left hand corner. I mean, it's still playable, but it won't go full screen, I guess, due to the scaling that's going on with the operating system right now. But with xCloud here, it's very playable over Ethernet. Moving over to a little bit of light emulation, we've got Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. Lowest resolution, that's how it goes with the Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, you know with RetroPie this works great, and as you can see with Android or Prime OS, we're getting amazing performance with Dreamcast. There's still some games that will struggle even at the native, but there's a lot of stuff that's fully playable. And finally here, we've got some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP, OpenGL, 1X, we've got Tekken 6, and there are some dips here and there, but it does run pretty decently. There are a couple easier to emulate games where you can go up to 2X with it, but don't expect to run Chains of Olympus at full speed, even with all of the little hacks on with the Pi 4. You win. So like I mentioned, this is still in beta, but it's functioning pretty well, and some people might want to try it out, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to install this. There are a few things you're going to need. Obviously, a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using an 8GB model here, but a 2 or a 4 will also work. And a micro SD card. I just went with a simple 32GB micro SD card. And I'm actually going to be using Windows to flash this to the micro SD card. But if you have a Mac, a Linux machine, or another Raspberry Pi running something like Raspberry Pi OS, you can use those to flash this operating system to your SD card. But right now, we're going to move over to my Windows machine, and we'll get this started. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this flash to our micro SD card. Obviously, I'm using Windows here, but you can use Linux or Mac. I've got my SD card already inserted into my PC. I'm just using a simple 32 gigabyte card shown up right here. We're going to need two things. We're going to need some way to flash the image to our SD card. Personally, I use Pi Imager. And we'll also need the operating system, Prime OS. Links for these will be in the description. First up, we're going to go ahead and grab this. This is just Pi Imager. Next up, we can head over to XDA, link is in the description, and we can download Prime OS from here for the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to scroll down, go ahead and download it. It might be a little higher in the future if you're watching this later on down the road because it is constantly updated. So once we have both of those files downloaded, the Imager and the OS, we're going to go ahead and install the Raspberry Pi Imager. Really easy. We'll just click Install get everything going, and we do want to run it. So Pi Imager is very simple to use. First up, we're going to choose our OS, and it's not going to be listed here, so we're going to need to go to Use Custom. This is going to open up an Explorer window, and we need to navigate to where we downloaded Prime OS. Mine's in my Downloads folder, and it's right here, ready to go. So I'm just going to click on this. Next, we need to choose our micro SD card. Like we saw, I've got a 32 gigabyte card. Just triple check that this is the card. Mine is drive E. We're going to choose that. And now we're just going to write it. So we're going to choose yes. It's going to go through the process of flashing this image to the micro SD card. Then it's going to verify the installation. And once this is finished up, we can move over to our Raspberry Pi and get Prime OS started up. And once it finishes up, you might get some pop-ups like this. You can go ahead and close everything down. And now it's actually time to move over to a Raspberry Pi. We're just going to go ahead and remove our micro SD card from the PC. Okay, so now that we have our micro SD card ready, we're going to go ahead and place it inside of a Raspberry Pi. Like I mentioned, I'm using that Desk Pi Lite case with an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. 
We'll go ahead and power it up, and the first boot is going to take much longer than any other time you boot up Prime OS, so just be patient with it and let it finish up. You can always tell when the Raspberry Pi is doing something in the background when your status LED is flashing on the Raspberry Pi. And once that initial boot is finished up, you'll be presented with a screen that looks something like this. We'll go ahead and put in our username. We're going to choose our location. And with Prime OS, you do have to agree to some terms of service. So if you're not into this, you can go ahead and skip the operating system if you want to. Now, you don't have to sign into your Google account if you don't want to. But if you want to use Google Play, you'll have to set it up just like an Android phone. We're now running Prime OS on the Raspberry Pi 4. But before we start anything at all, I would highly recommend rebooting the Pi one time. So down in the lower left hand corner, our app menu, we've got a little power icon here, and we're going to reboot. So once we're finished booting up for the second time, you can start using Prime OS. You can sign into Google Play if you want to, download your favorite apps, see what works, see what doesn't work. But remember, I mean, we're still working with a beta here in Prime OS. It will get better in the future. And once a few updates come out, I will do another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in running this, I'll leave links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running in Prime OS on the Raspberry Pi 4, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.